Hello everyone and welcome to Prophecy Files Briefing. We're glad that you've joined us today and I hope you'll share this out on social media. A lot of things that are taking place in our world and one that has just occurred as I am taping this today. It is the invasion uh, into Lebanon of the Israeli Defense Forces that began last night, of course, officially on the ground. Uh, there have been airstrikes that have been taking place and you need to know that ever since uh, October the 7th, there's been some average of 100 rockets coming in from Lebanon into Israel every day that's driven uh, the people away from the northern border and are living in the concentrated uh, areas of Tel Aviv and surrounding areas and have been since October the 7th. Same thing for Gaza on the south. I have been to the Lebanon border on the Israeli side, uh, right on the edge of the security fence that is there that is highly technical and looking across as the houses were built almost right up to the fence line, uh, our guide that was there and the folks that are in that kibbutz that were defending the nation of Israel and literally uh, into a bomb shelter that is there uh, on the grounds for the protection of those that are defending Israel, some 150 rockets that were pointed towards Israel out of the windows of every one of those houses by Hezbollah in the northern end of Lebanon. No windows in any of the houses. All those were containing rockets ready to be fired. The UN was there with their observation tower. I took uh, photos of the UN trucks that were manned at that time by Pakistani uh, UN uh, advisors and those that were watching over the border. But now it's become an absolute war zone. And that area, uh, as Israel is making sure that they're going to do what's necessary to protect their tiny nation from Hezbollah. So it is happening even as we speak, and it has the ability to change the trajectory of the entirety of the Middle East, and certainly in a biblical fashion. There's a lot of things to be uh, stated from that, and I'll share that with you in a few moments. But one of the things I think is so important for you to understand, on October the 7th last year, 2023, when the invasion took place by Hamas uh, and the murder and massacre, rape and pillage that took place across the border in, from Gaza into Israel, uh, that attack was not actually constructed by Hamas. In fact, it is uh, by record was constructed and uh, put together as a northern invasion to take place by Hezbollah. Hamas usurping it actually stole the idea and did it first, uh, prompting what would be now on the northern front and southern front of a war against Israel. Uh, they are working and they are battling on some five to seven different fronts, Israel is right now. And as a result of that, in past several months, all of the top leadership of Hezbollah has been eliminated. Uh, but there are arms and other armaments, devices, rockets, whatever that it may be, that are still entrenched. And even as I speak, in the tunnels that are just across the border in Lebanon, put together by Hamas, uh, are locations that are being uncovered right now with massive amount of armaments. And of course, that has been supplied to them by the leader of terrorism, Iran. And Israel has been targeting these offensive, these locations with an offensive now uh, for some time. And it's important for you to understand the context. And you can find everything that I'm talking about uh, that are news articles that are available in mass concerning what's taking place. Hezbollah uh, is now being revealed in the documents that have, they have just found in these tunnels as having engaged themselves in sexual slavery, rape, and the mass murder of Syrians that are taking place. And I won't go into the depth of this article, but it deals with uh, Hezbollah literally committing ethnic cleansing on the Syrians. So the Syrian people and Lebanese people, uh, those that are in Iran that are the people of Iran, not the leaders, but the people of Iran have been wanting for there to be a change to take place in leadership. And now as Israel targeted uh, Nasrallah just this past week and eliminated him, along with other individuals that were in that building, uh, that has thrown things for Hezbollah into a tailspin. Not to mention the fact 
uh, that this entire attack that was taking place and has been taking place, and now the, in, the intrusion of the IDF into Lebanon is of biblical significance. And at uh, Nezrallah, for example, as the leader of Hezbollah, his reign of terror goes back some 30 plus years, even to the United States embassy bombing in Beirut, uh, where there were uh, American citizens and military Marines that were killed in that bombing. Uh, he has been responsible, according to the record, for over 241 United States military personnel being killed. Not only that, but from the south, and this is where I mean when we're talking about more than uh, five different fronts that Israel is fighting on. It's not only the northern front of Hezbollah, the southern of Hamas, uh, but it is also involving the Houthis from in Yemen who have been shooting rockets at United States ships as well as rockets into uh, Israel, uh, into Tel Aviv as a matter of fact. And so just this past week, you may have seen it on the news, the IDF actually bombed Yemen and took out the oil supplies that are right there on the uh, seaports. And it's very significant. That will be a crippling effect, no doubt, but they continue to lob bombs into Israel even as we speak. So there was a United Nations speech and speeches that were given, and one of the most significant, of course, is coming from Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel this past week. And you may have noted, that once he concluded his remarks and his speech, which was very direct to the UN as being the uh, one of the cause and effects of the attacks that are taking place, Israel, the prime minister of Israel, I should say, walked off the stage and that's when Nezrallah was literally taken out and eliminated by the IDF and the rocket that was there. Just in the past few days, Benjamin Netanyahu has also expressed his hopes for peace and prosperity, according to this article, for the country of Iran and Israel by uh, up uh, upending the leadership of Iran and being able to let them know that there will come, and this is significant now, there will come um, more against Iran in the days that are ahead uh, they can expect that. This is very important because this has the ability to morph into even more. And I know the United States has been sending their ships there. We've been sending even uh, troops to the area to be prepared for all that's taking place because Iran is the sponsor of Hezbollah, Hamas, and multiple others. Just because the leadership has been taken out does not mean that all of it is over. So what you're watching right now is a buildup and continued war in the Middle East, the uprisings that are taking place, the uh, carnage and the uh, rape and murder by Hezbollah, Hamas, and uh, the war that is now ramping up to another level because Israel very clearly is defending itself and intends to push the border of Lebanon back some 20 miles, according to the reports, away from the Israeli border so that there won't be this um, sudden attack that caught them by surprise on October 7th of last year. Why is this so important? Well, we call them the Jews, but according to the book of Joel chapter three, verse two, and Jeremiah 50, verse number six, God calls them my people. You need to understand that God is going to defend his people and you have witnessed in the past few days from the uh, beeper bombs that have gone off and the uh, cell phone bombs that have gone off that have taken out Hezbollah, uh, Hezbollah operatives. You need to know that uh, God's uh, hand and his eyes are upon the nation of Israel. Here's another little something that you won't hear in the, in the uh, normal news. Nezrallah was looking for that particular location uh, that he was bombed in, in that uh, house. Uh, he was going there, but the tracking of him uh, was put on a whole new level. It is said, according to the article, that a gentleman was meeting with the head of Hezbollah, Nezrallah, and smeared a tracking device on his hand when he shook hands with him. That's the way that Israel was able to track him to that very house and then eliminated him as the head of the terrorist organization Hezbollah. It is being written in the Middle East that what we're watching right now is nothing short of biblical events, biblical significance that's taking place. You can know that from the word of God. 
There is not something that is unprecedented. It is not something that hasn't been prophesied. Here's what the Bible says in Psalm 83. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace and do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult and those who hate you have lifted up their heads. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, verse four, come and listen to this and let us cut, cut them off from being a nation, talking about Israel, that, and then it follows it up, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. You want to know how prophetically significant that is? It's naming in the following verses of scripture, the very countries that are involved in trying to wipe Israel off the map as they have own, they said from their own mouths, even those in leadership in Lebanon. They're calling this biblically significant. And there is no doubt that what we're watching could very well lead up to the war of Gog and Magog. Now, in the remaining moments that I have, I want to draw your attention because this biblical events and significance is not just happening there in the Middle East, but the reports are now coming out of North Carolina as a result of Hurricane Helene and the devastation that's taking there. This article reads, Biblical Devastation in North Carolina Towns. That terminology is being used over and over again. I remember reading in the 1973 book of The Vision by David Wilkerson that the meteorologists, weather individuals, and those that are watching all that's taking place in these last days would use those terms to describe the events of weather and the other significance events using the terms like apocalyptic, I've heard it in the past few days. Devastating, biblical devastation, biblical proportion. These are the terminologies that are being used to describe what's happening even around our world as God is shaking this planet. Here's another important fact as we leave you today that you need to be aware of. That is, in the past few hours, the dock workers on the eastern seaboard and in the Gulf of Mexico have gone on strike. Now, you may not find that very significant in the very first week, but according to the reports from CBS and others, that week two could find us beginning to feel uh, the effects of the strike if it continues into another week, actually finding prices going up and supplies becoming limited. If this goes into the third week, you're going to find that the store shelves are beginning to have shows signs of of slowing down and shortages taking place of even just the bare products. This is not just from the dock worker strike, but from the need and necessity of hurricane relief. They're gonna find it difficult if this dock worker strike continues. By the fourth week, if it's not settled, you're gonna find that the inventories are drying up and even with just the event of them striking even now, means that the supply chain will be backed up even perhaps for months, even toward the end of the year affecting Christmas. What's happening in our world? I have no doubt in my mind that all of these events are biblically significant and important for the child of God to understand that Jesus Christ is coming again, that we should get our house in order, be prepared for more than anything else. It's important for you to be prepared for the next great event on the calendar of God, and that is Jesus Christ's return. Till the next time, we're here on Prophecy Files Briefing. Remember, Jesus Christ is coming soon.